Hello guys, welcome to Steve Knows. So the Quest 3 reviews will be dropping rather soon. There is so much to talk about with this device that I'm actually going to break my review over several videos so I can do a bit of a deeper dive on each of the topics that makes this headset unique, the good and the bad. And I want to start off by talking about the Quest 3's mixed reality features and its pass-through mode because this is one of the biggest marketed topics on the Quest 3, so it felt apt to start here. So I think that is enough chinwagging. Let's review the Quest mixed reality mode and pass-through. Let's get started. We do have a sponsor for today's video. It is VR Cover, a staple accessories provider in the VR space, and this accessory is for the Quest 3. The Quest 3 headset does not come with an additional insert. You need additional covers for hygiene. I don't know about you, but the thought of sweat being absorbed into that foamy VR headset insert and then sharing that device with other people, it freaks me out. Out. Oh. So this VR cover insert is soft and comfortable on the skin. The Quest 3's default insert is foam and therefore there's lots of friction when upon the face and this can irritate after long hours of play. Even worse, if you use your headset for fitness, these covers will absorb that sweat. So the VR cover one you could easily put on and take off to wash them. And it also comes with a pair in the box. So while one is being washed, you can use the other one. The fabric also has antimicrobial properties as well for improved hygiene. I even have a 10% discount code going on down below, Steve knows Q3. So that is a chance for you to save some money if you want to purchase this accessory. You can save a few pennies on something that I would always genuinely recommend getting for any, any VR headset. So links will be down below in the description. So starting off with the question, how does Quest 3 achieve mixed reality? So you would have noticed three black panels on the front of this device. In here are two RGB cameras on the left and the right. There is then a depth sensor in the center. The two RGB cameras create a video feed to inside of the headset in real time. So you get to see full color pass through in 3D of your actual environment, the real world. And on paper, they claim to provide 18 pixels per degree. It's native color pass through, not an overlay like the Pro, and it's much better quality than the Quest 2. So the video feed then acts as like a canvas for the virtual assets to be overlaid onto. These overlaid assets then benefit from the increased fidelity of the Quest 3's hardware and display and are much higher quality than the pass-through surroundings. So that can be a little jarring sometimes, but I'll touch on that rather shortly. Being able to use the pancake lenses and the increased display resolution as well looks fantastic. The other thing that makes this possible though, what makes the mixed reality content possible, much more seamless and impressive is the inclusion of the depth sensor. So the headset will actually ask you to look around your room and it will start scanning and mapping out the walls, the ceiling, bumps you have on the floor, boxes. You'll see this polygonal visual overlay and overtake the entirety of your room. There is room for improvement here though because the mapping doesn't adjust in real time, it's not dynamic, so once you start playing a game after you've mapped and you move a chair, the mixed reality content will still think that the chair is in that position and will act accordingly. What, what, what about if I move the chair? No, look, it has to remain in its spot, so no real time adjustment sadly. So currently it just acts as a way to really quickly and easily set up your room for mixed reality content, but it doesn't recognize objects. You do need to set up furniture, doors, windows, etc., separately. And it also does not map fine details. It's a bit like if you went over to a table which had plates and cups on it and you put a really thin blanket over the top, those grooves and bumps will end up being your map. I hope that makes sense. Onto the quality of the pass-through though, this is where I really want to manage expectations. Although this is a massive step up from the Quest 2's black and white screen and the mega grainy visuals, it is not perfect. There is still definitely grain, more noticeable in low light conditions. So definitely make sure if you're using mixed reality with the Quest 3 to have a well lit room. But even in a well lit room, there is still a bit of grain. So do not expect retina level throughput. And the videos that you see, they don't truly represent the grain because in VR, it's obviously the image is much larger and close to your face than you see in a small snippet that I'm putting on the screen. So it's really kind of hard to show. So it's definitely a step up, 
but just not 10 out of 10. There is also warping, which I will show a certain scenario later on in the video. So around the edges of your view, when you look around and you're scanning the room, you will see warping at the very, very edges. If you bring objects into your view, you will see warping there as well. If you're up close to things, warping becomes definitely, definitely becomes more apparent when you're up close and personal with real world objects. However, though, despite all of these, what seem like negative comments coming from me, the pass through grain, the warping, it's not something you even notice when you're enjoying mixed reality experiences. It doesn't even cross your mind. The asset overlays are absolutely stunning and crisp on the Quest 3. And the pass-through is often in your peripheral because you're focusing on the overlays and the virtual assets, which is the mixed reality. And in your peripheral, you have less quality vision anyway. So it's still very, very immersive and does exactly what it is supposed to do. I can't fault it in that aspect. It is fit for purpose. Okay, so before we dive into some of the experiences, can you read things in pass-through mode? Can I use my computer and my phone? Because taking a headset off is an absolute pain. So the answer to that is yes. Words are jumping out at me. Almost like the technology that takes the feed from the cameras and then merges it into this immersive video feed that I'm looking at. It's kind of like warping in and out, almost like the text is breathing. It's really strange. Steve, spelling may be off. Uh, let's see, can, I, can you read that? Uh, so this says, schedule a room for later, plan your next virtual get together in advance, people invite you. So it looks like this is actually freaking usable. So now if you're using the computer, you can zoom in a bit and then I can read that now. Can you do fancy dress at Thought Park? What a great thing to look up. No, so you can read on the phone. That small text, you can't really read, it's not great, but the the headlines, you can for sure. So that's pretty handy. Whilst you're playing VR, the amount of times that you wanna check your phone or just look at something on the computer, you're replying to a, a, a forum because you're trying to set up a game, it's gonna make things so much better. So let's check out some of the experiences. I did try a few games, you may have seen many in the B-roll, but I'm gonna to touch on the few Quest 3 enhanced titles because it's almost kind of unfair to review the new hardware on old content. So starting off with First Encounters, this is a Quest 3 beginner's game. It's a default application on the headset for you to try once you get the device. So put simply, this game is you have Puffians that try and break in through the walls and the ceilings, and you have to shoot them and send them off in a spaceship. You have to try and achieve the highest score. So a great game for you to play and then share it with friends and family for everyone to have a go. But the first thing you notice with this is the clarity. The Quest 3 enhanced experiences look so fantastic. They really do. The thing that got me was the setup was so seamless thanks to that depth sensor. And the outcome was impressive because enemies would hide behind furniture that had been been mapped out showing that occlusion works rather well and I didn't even have to really set it up I just had to look at the dang object and seeing out into the distance when you're surrounded by four walls in my small British home was pretty surreal it's rather cool and you don't feel tight and claustrophobic you feel rather comfortable <laughs> Next is Broken Edge. This game absolutely blew me away again with its visual fidelity and its ease of setup thanks to that sensor. So it tore a rift into your home on one of the walls that came over the ceiling and over through the floor as well. And you have to battle it out against a wielding swordsman that's coming through that rift. The dogs, they got in the way while I was playing this, but being able to see my home and my surroundings in a game where you're, you're swinging your arms like rather crazily trying to attack an enemy or block attacks, it didn't take me out of the experience compared to the VR version. It actually made me feel more comfortable to play because I was aware of my surroundings whilst I was swinging like a madman. So that was definitely a plus and another benefit for mixed reality for certain genres of games. And that's quite a nice segue onto the next title talking about specific genres, BAM. BAM is a godlike view multiplayer experience like a mini robot wars with mini games in it. This was great fun and showed a different side of the mixed reality feature where you can place an entire arena in your home, much like Demio, you can place that as a tabletop in your home as well. And you were able to walk around this arena and play a live action game whilst being able to interact with the robots, talk to friends and see the environment around you. Mixed reality obviously has huge application for tabletop titles like Demio or Godview games like BAM, but this one was just so much fun. And the detail, being able to blow it up and look up really close or stand up to change your perspective and walk around so you can look behind certain objects on the map, 
it's a different experience and it's not something I didn't realize how much I was actually going to love it. I can't wait to see how mixed reality progresses. So overall, despite some of the negatives and nuances I've explained in this video, the mixed reality experiences seem pretty awesome. I'm so excited to try more. Although I do think the genre of mixed reality needs to evolve. It's very static at the moment. The games are not very complex. They're quite simple in their premise, but that will come with time once people adopt and these games, or oh, people actually want to play these games because Never before has it been so easy to set up and play mixed reality content, which was a huge barrier to entry previously. I'm not playing this, I'm not marking out my walls, my floors, it was just too long. The pass through is also way, way better. Not great, not perfect, but so good compared to the Quest 2 and the Quest Pro and it's fit for purpose. Mixed reality still has a long way to go, perhaps the next generation of headsets like Quest 4, they might invest more in it if it takes off. But I wanted to manage expectations in this video that it's not as good as you were probably hoping it's going to be, but it is still very, very good. But for $500, it's a lot of money, isn't it? Gosh. It's a step in the right direction and it works. So thank you so much for watching. VR cover links are down below in the description. You'll save 10% with uh, Steve Knows Q3 discount code. And I hope this was useful as well. Comment down below the next topic you want to see in the deep dive of Quest 3 reviews. Have a great week. Click subscribe. Happy gaming. Good day!